Hello everyone, my name is Gajendra Deshpande. I am working as assistant professor at KLS Kutra Institute of Technology, India. Today I will be delivering a talk on deceptive security using Python. So these are the contents uh, which I am going to discuss today. Introduction to deception, then two tools, web trap and demon hunter. Then our experiment, what we have done with respect to deception. Then finally the conclusion. Let us try to understand deception with the help of scenario. Imagine you are passing through an unknown street at midnight and you find that some antisocial elements are following you. To save yourself from them, you start running and look for a safe place to hide yourself. On the way, you will find a good person and request him to help you. He hides you in his place to protect you. When these antisocial elements visit a good person's place and inquire about you, the good person misguides them and redirects them to some other place in order to protect you. This is exactly how deception works. In this analogy, you are the resources to be protected. Antisocial elements are the hackers who want to gain access to the resources. And a good person is a deception technique that protects the resources from hackers by making them fall in the trap. Now this is the basic idea behind uh, deception. Deception is a technique where hackers methods will be used as a security mechanism that is phishing the fishers. Now, uh, to understand phishing, let us take an example. Assume that you have a legitimate website of banking website. Then what hackers will do is they create a uh, similar looking website which looks exactly like a real website. But in reality, uh, it's not the real website. In the back end, the database will be different. So with the similar looking uh, interface, they will collect your information and they use this information to carry out the further attacks. So deception is a military tactic used by both attackers and defenders. Now let us understand how it works. Now we have a common interface which is being accessed by both benign user and a malicious user. If benign user is authorized, then he will be given a normal access to the real system. If the user is identified as unauthorized, then he will be redirected to the deceptive system. Now there are two types of deception technology. One is active deception and second one is passive deception. So active deception will provide inaccurate information intentionally to the hackers to fall for the trap. Passive deception will provide incomplete information. Other half of the information, intruders will try to gain all the information and fall for the trap. Uh, they can also be classified as client-side deception. So client-side deception is used by hackers that is known as phishing. Then server-side deception used by security providers. So better deception is using both active deception as well as passive deception that is provide inaccurate and incomplete information together. Now let's see the history of deception technology. So history of deception starts with uh, the introduction of honeypots in 1998. Honeypots are small traps which are uh, put in the network when the attacker tries to access those points, he will fall in the trap and it will raise the uh, alarm and provide the information to the system administrator. Then honey nets are the network of honey pots introduced in the year 2000. Then honey token is a small piece of information which is embedded in the real information. When somebody steals the real information, it sends the uh, alert message to the system administrator saying that so and so message has been or so and so information has been stolen. So this gives the information about how the information has been stolen. The next Honeypot 2.0 were introduced in the year 2012 and deception technology was introduced in the year 2016. The advantages of deception are increased accuracy, minimal investment and it is future ready. Let's see the first tool web trap. So it is designed to create deceptive web pages to deceive and redirect attackers away from real websites. The deceptive web pages are generated by cloning real websites, specifically their login pages. The project is composed of two files. One is web cloner and second one is deceptive web server. Web cloner is responsible for cloning real websites and creating the deceptive web page. Whereas the deceptive web server is responsible for serving the cloned web pages and reporting to a syslog server upon request. So to install, you can follow the commands. So it's all, it also mentions the dependencies required. 
So to clone a file, you should to clone a login script, you should use webclone.py file. The syntax is uh, given below. So webclone.file and the folder. So here we are trying to clone the Wikipedia's uh, login page and storing it in the folder Wikipedia, Wikipedia login page folder. The next trap server.py it serves the files from the Wikipedia login page folder. It's nothing but the uh, cloned uh, login page. When somebody tries to access this cloned login page, it's going to send the information to the syslog server. The next tool is Daemon Hunter. So it is used to create low interest and honeypot servers and their agents plus manager to check the logs. So Daemon Hunter allows you to create a honey in it all customized by yourself from ports to protocol handlers. So Daemon Hunter is a, a tool. So you can see in the diagram, it can deal with uh, multiple protocols and it can deal with multiple uh, ports. Now, why we develop the deception tool? So we know that the cyberspace is a national asset, especially in this time, uh, pandemic time, it has become more important. Now, XML is the heart of many mainstream technologies. You take web services, service order architecture, or even cloud computing. So web services vulnerabilities can be present at various levels. It can be present at operating system, network database, web server, application server, application core, and so on and new technologies uh, always bring new challenges but it also uh, carries the old challenges then what we have done here is uh, the problem definition is that to secure web resources from expert injection attack using modular recurrent neural networks our proposed solution uses uh, Model recurrent neural network architecture to identify and classify a typical behavior in user input. Once the typical user input is identified, the attacker is redirected to fake resources to protect the critical data. So for that, we developed the count based validation technique, which works on the frequency of characters, not on uh, uh, regular expression or string matching. Now, to understand expert injection attacks, let us first understand the structure of basic XML document. So here you can see there's an XML document and it, and it has got three fields, username and password, which stores legitimate username and passwords. Now the line which is mentioned in the blue color is a valid query, legitimate query. So appropriate username and passwords are specified. Whereas the second line, the last line, which is specified in the red color, it is a malicious query because it involves the Boolean operators and some special uh, characters such as numbers one or two uh, and so on. So it's basically the malicious query. So it gives you access to the uh, access to the resources illegally. Now this slide shows that the typical likelihood of exploit of expert injection is high whereas the attacker skills required are low. Now we had referred some papers and uh, there were some gaps found. So we found that neural network approach to identify and a typical behavior in input was not done. So the study showed different approaches to handle expert injection attacks. It also showed methods applied and their disadvantages. We can conclude from the study that the neural networks are not applied to detect uh, expert injection attacks and existing results are not promising. Uh, for example, in some cases, the response time was around 15 minutes, which is not at all acceptable with respect to web applications. The study showed how modularity in case of neural networks helps to achieve improved performance. Modular neural networks have not been applied to cybersecurity, particularly to the detection of SQL or expert injection attacks. Now, this was our proposed system design. Now we have here three tiers, presentation tier, business tier, and the data tier. So in presentation tier, we have the user interface through which the user will enter the input. Maybe attacker will also enter the input with a malicious query. Then in business tier, the input is processed. If it is classified as um, valid, then the resource, uh, a real resource will be served. Otherwise, fake resources will be served. Now on the data tier, you can see that there are three types of uh, data. 
one is a real XML document, then second one is a fake XML document, and third one is a custom error messages. So we'll see what is custom error messages later. So on the left hand side, you can see some valid inputs are specified. So they are email ID, mobile number, and alphanumeric word. And some malicious inputs are also specified. That is one or one equal to one and so on. Then some invalid inputs are very large input string, string with special characters, string formatted from different character set. When you specify these invalid inputs, it's going to generate the error message. Note here that even error messages many times disclose a lot of information. For example, which operating system is used? What is the version of operating system and so on? So this helps the hacker to uh, identify the loopholes in that particular operating system and in that version and he can use that information to carry out the further attacks to hide this information you can go for custom error messages now this is the algorithm of our project so first step is to scan the user input then determine the length of uh, the user input then count the frequency of every character in the user input so in table 4 that is bottom right corner uh, the number of um, uh, the characters and their threshold has been specified so you can see here that some characters are not at all uh, allowed so the threshold is set as zero whereas alphabets and digits are specified any uh, whereas the dot is allowed only two times and so on so similarly with respect to that appropriate error code has been set then next uh, step is to uh, if the frequency of the character is below the threshold value set for that particular character so in table 4 then set the error code to 40 else if the frequency of the characters is above the threshold value set for that particular character in table 4 then set the error code to 4000 else set the error code to 400 so you can see here that there are two more tables one is training data set for classification of login attempts and second one is the training data set for uh, classification of error codes. So each is trained on a uh, different neural network with the configuration of 50 neurons and hidden layer as LSTM and output layer as a softmax layer. Then both of these neural networks have been trained using RProp uh, trainer that is resilience propagation uh, trainer to train the network. Uh, then next, if the training error and test error of both the networks are 0.0%, then finally they classify the input vector based on the outputs of both the neural networks in table 3. So there is one more uh, table here. So you can see here, uh, we have created the another data set. So this data set is nothing but the outputs of previous two neural networks. So their combination has been used for final classification. So if the output of both the neural networks is valid, then final classification will be valid. If one of them is malicious, then it will be malicious. If one of them is invalid, then it will be invalid. So uh, finally classify the input vector based on the outputs of both the neural networks in table three. So if the user input is successfully classified as valid and found in the real xml file then return the message login successful else if the user input is classified as malicious then return the contents of fake xml file else if the user input is classified as invalid then return the error message then to develop this we had used pybrain package then bottle fire microwave framework and apache web server then scripting language is python along with the NumPy and Matplotlib uh, packages. So PyBrain is a modular machine learning library for Python. So it is short for Python based reinforcement learning, artificial intelligence and neural network. So to download, you can follow the URL and more information can be found on the uh, URL specified in this slide. Then similarly, Bottle is a fast, simple, lightweight WSGI microwave framework for Python. So it is distributed as a single file module and has no dependencies other than Python standard library. So it includes built-in routing templates, utilities and server, which are necessary for any web framework. So it does not depend on any external libraries. So you can just download Bottle.py into your project directory and start coding. 
Now you can see here, these are the results. So you can see here with respect to, we have got the results with respect to model neural network and the single neural network. So you can see here, always the results are better with respect to model neural network, whereas, and the results are consistent, whereas the results are not consistent with respect to the single neural network. So these are the results with respect to true positives. Then similarly, you can find the same with respect to false positives. So results are consistent with modular neural network and they are not consistent with single neural network. So similarly, true negatives, then false negatives, then response time. So response time you can see here uh, for the number of samples. So the ratio is one raised to 1.5 seconds. So for example, if you go for single neural network, it will take 1.5 seconds per sample. Whereas if you go to model neural network, it will uh, take one second. Then the summary of results. So you can see here, uh, the results are always better with respect to model neural network. Even with uh, outlier and without outlier, the results are better with model neural network compared to single neural network. And there is a lot of difference with respect to single neural network and the model neural network. So these are the snapshots. So on the left hand side, we have a fake data.xml file. And on the right hand side, we have the data.xml file. So you can see here, both have the same structure. It looks similar, but the one is the, one file stores the fake data, other file stores the real data. Now this is the user interface. Now, uh, here, it is showing login successful because user has entered valid username and a valid password. Now you can see here, here the hacker has entered the malicious input, but instead of uh, say displaying the error message, it is displaying some data. So, and also you can see here, the information about the hacker's system is also being uh, uh, noted down here. For example, it's uh, IP address, then the request method, web browser, then the server time, then the query string, then the remote port number, etc. are being noted. Then what your hacker does is he tries to log in with the fake data. Now it shows that login successful again. Now the hacker feels that he has gained access to the real system, but in reality he's not. Now the conclusion is that our solution offers input security over existing methods by misleading the attackers to false resources and custom error pages. Our results also show that the system accepts legitimate input although the user input may contain some special characters and rejects only truly malicious inputs. Our solution combines modular neural networks and count-based validation approach to filter the malicious input. Our solution has resulted in increased average detection rate of true positives and true negatives and decreased average detection rate of false positives and false negatives. The security system have to be successful every time, but the attacker has to be successful only once. Now with deception, I can only say that we can buy uh, the extra time to protect our resources. We may not be able to completely protect our system, but this extra time helps us to uh, protect our resources. Thank you. So these are the references which you can refer for more information.